Hey everybody, welcome back to another weekly Slime Fun Update with your host Boomer. Today we have a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not going to be able to show this to you right now, but one new feature inside of Simple Material Generators is that all the generators are configurable, meaning how fast they produce resources can be configured by the server admin. So another uh, configurable option that you have. Let's move on to Infinity Expansion. The Stoneworks Factory, something that we probably don't talk a whole lot about, has the ability to change cobblestone into multiple different items. Three new uh, recipes have been added. The ability to go from cobble to uh, sandstone, simply by crushing, crushing, and then compacting. We can now do sandstone. Compact, in this case, would be the same thing as crafting in a 2x2 two two bench. Here, we're able to take cobble, smelt it into stone, and smelt it into smooth stone. And finally, we can now take cobble into stone, compact it into stone bricks, and now smelt it into cracked stone bricks. Three new recipes have been added. All right, next one we're going to look at is from Fallout's Amplifications. He's got another new gem called the Guardian Gem. This gives you an 8% chance of spawning a guardian. It's going to fight for you until that. Now, I'm going to attempt, and I'm going to get in the F5 mode here. Let's start by summoning a zombie. Now, I got one earlier in testing this. He's a cute little guy. He kind of looks like a guardian that hangs over your shoulder. Unfortunately, it's only an 8% chance, so that means I might have to try this a couple of times to uh, get him to spawn. There we go. Now we got my little guardian. All right, let's get some food, and let's do this again. We'll summon another zombie. And we'll let the Guardian go fight him. So, he did react. Let's try it one more time just to see this. Let's give the Guardian a chance to get in there. So, he takes a minute. So, I did take a hit once or twice. But, it's nice to have this lying around. Now, he won't attack another player's Guardian. He'll attack another player. But, still another cool feature been added into Amplifications. All right, and let's wrap this update up with Chris the Maya story. Sefi, I don't know where you find the time for all these amazing things, but I'm telling you guys, he has added a ton in the last week. The first things we want to talk about are the bombing and searing sponges. Everybody knows vanilla sponges clear out water. Well, Sefi is now finding a way to clear out lava. So the bombing sponge clears out a 4x4. The searing sponge, I'm not going to be able to reach out far enough, but it clears a 7x7. And all you have to do to clean them up, I should probably go back into game mode survival, just to show you this, is once you uh, mine them up, you can simply put them in water. So we'll grab this one, we'll grab this one, we'll take them over to the water. All right, so it's saturated, look at that. We just created an obsidian farm on top of it. Nice little side effect is that it creates obsidian, and now if I mine these sponges, they're ready to use again. There we go. Seven block range and a four block range. Really awesome for me. This is this is a, a must have, I think. As much as I go caving and mining, uh, these definitely become a must have. All right, while it's nighttime, we're going to show you the Runemark sleeping bag. Let's get away from these other machines for now. If you're stuck, right, in a large area, a lot of mobs, and you need daylight to save your butt, real simple thing. Place this thing down. Now, it will not change your spawn point, but it's just like sleeping because now it's daytime. And you'll notice it actually went back and put your spawn point to your previous location. So if you were to die, you're going to go back to wherever you last slept in the bed. So it's a temporary way, uh, similarly to the bed pet, to change night to day. But here it has the effect of actually sleeping. So this is awesome. And it only ha will be working at night. It's got to be officially nighttime in Minecraft for that to take place. All right, let's look at these two items that are generating these weird, like, phantom almost attractions. Get that off my head. I love these things. These are like upgraded hoppers, upgraded uh, the uh, infused hoppers. They're the voids 
the shattered and a fragmented void. This allows you the fragmented, I believe, is uh, five blocks away or four, and the shattered is seven. So I thought it was kind of funny. I thought maybe let's play with around each other and see which one fights. Clearly, the bigger one wins until we're out of its range. I was kind of going back and forth. Now, the nice thing about these as well is that cargo can be used on them. So if you're clearing a large area above you or, or within a range of these, you can actually, if you wanted to, or if there's going to be a permanent thing, right? If your server doesn't allow you to set up hoppers because of a mob farm and mobs are dying, this can pick up all those mob drops and cargo them back to your system or using network, whichever one you want. They each do hold nine stacks. So if you had all nine slots filled and you drop something, well, it's going to try to pick it up, but it's going to sit there for five minutes until the item despawns. So these could definitely be used in this one, you know, seven block radius. That means it can cover a 225 square block area, 15 by 15 centered on the shattered void, which would previously have taken 225 vanilla hoppers, or it would have taken approximately, I think it would have been, well, the up the infused ma uh, hopper is a seven by seven. So technically you would have needed six to get that, that tiny last little edge. But these will allow you to, literally, like I said, you, you can be mining, you can be having a mob farm fall down, have all the drops picked up by these, and cargo them out. Pretty awesome. All right, let's keep going here. So in Christmas, Sefi has also added two new material, uh, two new items with milk. One is the glass, and one is magic milk. Now the glass of milk, can be placed and will remove any positive or negative effects when you right click it. The downside is, is once you mine it up, it's gone forever. It's going to turn into a hat. It becomes something you place on a wall. The magic milk, I keep debating if Sefi's having some fun with us, he's planted an Easter egg, or if it's simply just, hey, it's a glass of milk. It will remove potion effects. Now, I've not been able to find any other uh, effects of this yet. And I'm going to be curious. I'm going to challenge everybody. Please don't go looking in a code. If there is an Easter egg, let's see if we can find it naturally by playing the game. And if you do, please post it in the chat. I'd love to know about it. So we're going to give ourselves a splash potion of weakness. And so we can see we've got it. We'll hit the with the milk. All right. Our weakness is gone. We'll go ahead and place the glass of milk. Where did I put it? For some reason, I grabbed it. Let's do that. We'll put the glass of milk down. We'll hit ourselves with another splash potion of weakness. Confirm we've got it. And we'll right click. The weakness is gone. So again, if you go ahead and you mine this up, that's fine. But it won't work as a, uh, a glass of milk anymore. It simply becomes another block on your wall. And so another amazing thing that Sefi's added in here are the new satchels. These allow you to store crystals. Now I'm ashamed to admit on my base on the Royal MC server, I've got 17 chests full of crystal made crystals. It's disorganized as best as I could, but it's it needs a better system. Sefi's done that for us. There's six different satchels starting at the apprentice. The first one will allow you to store just unique. The second one, as you go up the levels, will add common. And then we'll add uncommon. From there, we'll go to rare, epic, and then ultimately mythical. Now, one thing to keep in mind is how to fill these things. You don't just shift click them in. You can't just place them in. They'll actually get picked up off the ground. So when you are in the process of, um, you know, you go through, you put them through the chronicler, through the realization altar, as they appear on the ground, just let your satchel pick them up. Now, one thing I have discovered along the way, it's only have one satchel in your hot bar. Otherwise, it could go into a random one. So we're going to give ourselves some crystal, get away from the void. And again, all you've got to do is simply pick them up. They're not going to come back into my inventory. They're going to go right into the satchel. And you'll see it right clicked. And here we go. We've got 200. So far, I've had 1,400 in one slot. Didn't seem to be an issue. I'm not sure what the upper limit is, but knowing Sefi is probably pretty high. 
another awesome feature. Also, um, some people have been asking about downgrading crystals. So let's look at this again. Let's grab, let's see, I want to get some epics. Here we go. And get bar, let's do flint and steel, right? So if you want to downgrade one, you're supposed to be able to throw it into a fire. And it totally destroyed it. It did not downgrade it. Oh, wait a minute. There it is. Look at this. The void grabbed it. And it went into, I'm going to say, my Grandmaster Satchel. And it's now a rare. We went from an epic down to a rare. So it went down one. Let's get a further bit away from here. Let's just make sure that doesn't pick it up. So let's do this again. We'll toss it right into the fire. It kicked it out. It went right into our satchel. We now have two rare. So you have a way to downgrade crystals. For whatever you're crafting, you're making, if you need a lower level of the crystal, you're going to be able to do that simply by tossing it into the flint and steel fire. I don't recommend trying lava. I'm pretty sure lava will consume it, but fire. So anything that flint and steel can ignite. Guys, I want to thank you so much. Um, this has just been a great series we're running through. And, uh, you know, again, hats off to the devs for all the hard work they've done. And hats off to all the players for helping to come up with new ideas to make uh, Slime Fun just awesome. So thanks, everybody. And don't forget, when you're playing Slime Fun, you got to go, Boomer, or you got to go home. We'll see you later.